Hola guys, bienvenidos, welcome, welcome back. Cold morning, so I got my arroz con leche as my breakfast today. Anyway, um, I got a call for two, I believe it said two reach-in freezers uh, down at a pizza place. So right now we're gonna go. I was trying to see what time they get there because a lot of our customers don't open till like, or don't get there till like nine. So I gotta wait around sometimes. But uh, they should be there already, so I'm gonna head out. It's about a 30 minute drive. Nice chill drive today because we're gonna take the back road. Gonna get some country views today. Don't have to go through the city or anything hectic. And um, it's a Monday, like I said, so gonna have a little pick me up and we'll see what we get into. I didn't pay attention when I took it out, but you can kind of tell where the nut goes and what side was on the other. So it's gonna go like this, even though I've never seen this kind of blade before. So we're gonna do that and put the nut back on. All right, so we have to take it out to do it right. My hands do not fit in there. So it's gonna go like this. I keep forgetting to grab my gloves. And I kept some of those uh, extra pieces right there. It's not like a nut, it's just like a little locking thing for the fan. So now I can put it back. And then I got a tie strap here. Thank you. 
So basically took it out again and uh, made sure this bracket was on there tight. That's probably what caused all this trouble. So let's try it again. Much better. Could use a new, mo new motor but they don't need it, need it. It should work now. Alright, so this one's cooling. Let it run for a little bit, it's already cold in here. And then we'll go to the next one over there. Alright, so this one is cooling, but I'm gonna get the temperature reading to see why they might be complaining about this one. Maybe it's not cold enough. So let's check at the far point over here. to clean. Alright, so I'm gonna give them new con controls, but I thought I had some. I have a bunch of these uh, true ones, but none of them are the right model number. These are all, because I think I need a 800-393. I have 366 and 380 and other stuff so i don't have the one they need and i don't want to put an aftermarket on a true usually we put oem if we can unless it's an absolute emergency i'll use one of these uh ramco ones that i have but i'll get them uh oem they have them in stock at johnstone i can just go pick it up oh man super nice people i've never done work here before uh, not myself, at least. Uh, it's a pizza place that I didn't know we had. It's a local one. It's not the big chains that we do. But they gave me some some free wings. Uh, if it's one thing I can't turn down, it's wings. Or pizza. So I got my lunch. It's going to be lunch already. So uh, I don't want to take it apart because... I didn't have the part yet, so uh, if we open up that controller, it looks like it has a lot of uh, moisture in there, and it could have been arcing or something. I think I, I saw a spark, so I was turning it on and off. We need to get that one. Uh, I kept shutting it off, and it was like 20 degrees, 15 degrees. And the other one, the low boy, they were comp their complaint was that stuff gets like 
soggy and stuff. Um, she's like, I don't know how to describe it, but it's not right. Like the stuff's not coming out right. So that one's uh, just a cooler. And when I checked, it kept going into the twenties. Now, sometimes I want them colder. That's fine. 33 ish is okay with me. But once it goes down, uh, the last reading I got was like 20, 29. And I took my thermometer out because I went to work. I went to check the other one because that turned off. And I went back 30 minutes later and it was still running. So it was much colder than 29. Because uh, like sometimes you can run them a little bit colder than 35 just so that they're they're happy with the temp throughout the box. But uh, once it gets, to, it gets into the 20s and it's still running. 30 minutes later or whatever uh, I'm pretty sure I would have had 25 or less that's too cold so and I had it set to like between 2 and 1 because it goes from 1 to 9 on the control they're the uh, mechanical ones so if I set it that low to 2 I was pretty close to 1 I believe there's no way it should be that cold so uh, I'm gonna go get them a new one of that too. Replace both. They said they were cool with it. And the one on top, it's kind of weird. I've never seen these. Uh, it's like the, uh, what do you call it? Pan chiller. But it's not connected to anything. It's like a standalone pan chiller that you just plug in and place on some on the table. So they had that set to 45 degrees. I told the, the lady, like, that's not right. Like, I, I've never seen one set to 45. So that one I set it down to 33 because I think the controller only goes to like 32. So considering how small it was and it didn't run anything else, it was standalone, I ran it to 33. I told her I'll, I'll look at it tomorrow again. But normally on those pan chillers you want ice on the walls. There's no fan. This one didn't have a fan. Or I didn't think it did. I'll check again tomorrow. But either way, uh, she thought that ice was bad. I'm like, no, on a pan chiller, it's good. Or at least like light frost um, to where it's like really cold. That's the only way it's gonna cool what's in the containers. Uh, if not, I know I didn't check it the right way. I didn't check it with a probe thermometer because I didn't wanna get my probe dirty, to be honest. And I could just tell that it wasn't gonna be uh, at the right temp so checking it on top usually if you get if you check the top layer of the unit I mean of the product and it's not even 40 degrees it's going to be way off so it was reading like 55 I believe 56 there was no way if I, if I stuck a probe in there it was still going to be 50 degrees alright so just visited Johnstone and they had the uh, original ones on true I think we usually try to go OEM because there's so many different ones uh, that they use. Uh, using a universal is not always best. Just from experience on True, but if I have to, I can definitely make a aftermarket work. Just takes a little calibration usually. Because yeah, like on these original ones, they don't really, you, can, you don't really calibrate them. They're just as is. But if you get a universal one, uh, usually like Ranko is what I use. There's a set screw for like, I think they say it's for elevation. Um, and then another one to make it colder or warmer. Two little set screws. So we usually can use them, but they take calibration because they don't, they're universal. They work for like a bunch of different things. So when we can for true, uh, we use OEM mechanical controls. So the only bad thing about working in a restaurant refrigeration is you get covered in either flour or grease. I got most of it off, but it's also there in my Vito bag. I think I prefer flour though. It's easier to, to remove than sticky grease oil.
So yeah, that one I had to de-ice it and uh, we ran it again. It's basically going on my meter. I had a, a thermometer in there. It's going into 33, 32 degree territory. So I had to go out and get a thermostat because it's not cutting out. All right, so I had to go pick one up because I didn't have pigtail. I prefer to carry the, the one with the capillary extension just because um, those are more universal. Now this one, it's behind the evaporator already. Or that's where the thermostat's located. So I'm okay with using this with the coiled bulb because it's already gonna read the return. So right now we'll put it in, easy swap out. I didn't wanna put the one that I had in stock with the capillary and have to run it if this is easy plug and play. So just keep in mind, depending on where it's located, you might have to calibrate it a little bit. Like it might, you can't set it to, well, this goes for any controller. You can't set it to 35 and just expect it to work. So we're gonna put it in, run it a couple times and then get out of here. your indicator always make sure you put in the right orientation so that's off so it goes like that So on that one, on that day, I was running back and forth a lot. So if the footage is a little choppy, that's why, sorry about that. Uh, that's just one of those days where, and it happens a lot where I'm doing my own call and then I get called to help, you know, our other guys. And uh, on that one, we had a walk-in that was icing up. It was going down to 30 and not cutting out. So we replaced the thermostat and it worked out fine. 
And then when I went back to the regions, uh, I just put in the controls. So those are going to be basically OEM controls uh, for those units. The, they were both cutting out in the low 30s, which is fine for me. As long as we're not in the 20s, definitely, definitely not in the 10s, because it was already like 11 at one point. So they were both, they were all coolers and we were trying to maintain 30s. I could have stopped at the first symptom, which was the fan blade coming off. And I could not find where the nut went. So I just, I put one of those, I keep, if I have uh, used parts or we scrap, you know, a, a unit or something and I want to keep certain parts that are still pretty good. Uh, that's where that came from. I had little locking it's like a it's like a nut washer because it's flat and you screw it on and it holds the blade in place so I kept a couple of those uh, extra so I knew I had some on me and I put one on there to keep the blade on and I could have stopped there and just you know charging for that but while I was checking the other one I went ahead and ran you know my thermometer in the the tall region to see because I like to see what what they cut out at and it wasn't cutting out so I had to recommend the controls, and they were cool with it. They were super nice people. Um, I, I did show them, like at the end, I noticed that there was some cold air coming out. Of course, it had torn gaskets. So I like using that little Klein thermal imager. It's relatively affordable compared to the other brands that are the big gun style. Um, and it fits in my bag, so while I'm working, I just if I decide to pull it out, I can get it out, take some uh, pictures if I need to, or just show them if they're uh, if they're there with me. I can just kind of hover over where I'm where they have like uh, problem areas and show them that there's a leakage and infiltration, you know, happening. So on that one, one of the doors was letting out a lot of cold air and they asked us if we could quote them some new gaskets, so we're gonna do that. I gotta look up uh, the gaskets. I you know, got the information, took some measurements. So I'll be back for that. And it's been, work it's been running fine because I'm recording this you know, a week later so I can upload the video. All right, so here are the controls that we took out. And if you can, I don't know if I can show it. They are Dan Falls controls that they use, from what I can tell, because this should be an original one, how it's like red in color. The newer ones, uh, usually they're black, and they're from Dan Falls as well, and they have the same model number. I broke this piece off, but it had a model number on the back. This was for the low boy, so I'm thinking... This might have been changed out at one point, I've never seen one like this in particular I could be wrong though it's also pretty old I don't know if it looks as old as this one though so anyway we broke it off so we can look at the contacts because these controls have contacts it's a switch uh, basically everything in, in your controls is some sort of switch and there's gonna be contacts and connections so here you can kind of see how pitted they are this one right here those are going to be real pitted out it's super old you can tell moisture got to it this sensor is probably not sensing that well either so either way I caught it out of calibration and that's why I changed it but you can tell with the age it needed to be changed out anyway you know same for this one's pretty old so the new ones were cutting out pretty good so these were out of whack common issue with the uh, reach-ins is these mechanical controls uh, they're pretty easy to, to work on reaching you know true and Charleston Charleston has a little bit more for you to check but on the true at least I used to work on a lot of them if it's not the control then it's a restriction because they use uh, cap tubes as a metering device and I'm here at the 
hospital that I was working at with the reach in and I did the zoom lock push fittings. So let's go see how that's doing. A lot of people are hesitant to use these products, uh, even the press fittings, which I think the press fittings are a lot safer and like in my head, but uh, I got a lot of people that were upset about it. A lot of people that were interested in it. So let's go see, like, did they come off? Did it leak? I mean, I haven't gotten called back yet. So did something happen and they didn't tell me? Still got the fittings, no oil, no leak. They're still good, it's all cold in here. They've had it running for a few weeks now. So there you go. I um, uh, hope you guys enjoyed. Subscribe, comment, like, all that good stuff. And I'll see you guys.